Hey, I'm Daisy Fuentes and I just spent some time talking to Kara on Really Famous and I gotta tell you, two Jersey girls talking away. Um, you gotta experience it, there's really nothing else I can say. How do you explain that? You just gotta listen. This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson and I interview famous people, but I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. Sometimes it's like listening to old friends catching up and other times it's like eavesdropping on a therapy session. Today's guest is Daisy Fuentes. I'm kicking off 2020 with a guest who inspires me and I think she may inspire you too. I love her perspective, her approach to life, her insight and her authenticity. So Daisy is hosting a brand new show for NBC called A New Leaf. It's sponsored by Ancestry.com and it helps everyday people discover their family history using genealogy and sometimes DNA analysis to help guide them on their journey of self-discovery. The show basically picks a new guest every week who wants to know more about their ancestry, does the full-on research for them, and then Daisy presents the results. Check your local listings because when it airs depends on where you live. So you may know Daisy, of course, as the popular MTV VJ, or you may remember her from House of Style, America's Funniest Home Videos, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve, her CNBC talk show, I can go on and on. She's a TV personality, host, she does a lot of things, and she's also an entrepreneur. Now I'll get to that in a second. Daisy has had a pretty cool career path. She started as a model, accidentally scored a last minute gig presenting the weather on Telemundo, and everything basically blew up from there. About 15 years ago, she launched a clothing line and a hair care line, sunglasses, prescription eyewear. She has shoes. You can get it all online, Daisy Fuentes style. So Daisy and I met on my recent trip to California. Shout outs to Robin and Christy for connecting us. Thank you guys. I drove up to Daisy's Malibu home where she hangs out with her really famous husband, musician Richard Marks. Yes, she's married to Richard Marks. So anyway, I met Daisy at uh, her Malibu home, which is literally on top of the Pacific. Um, It's a beach house, and she showed me where the water splashes up during high tide. That's a very like zen place, very soothing, very relaxing. She poured me a glass of water, her dog kind of snuggled up beside us, and we sat down for an enlightening talk. Oh, and we bonded over New Jersey too, but we didn't get around to that until after the interview. Next time we decided we'll talk Jersey. So I like podcasts because it's pretty much uncensored. You can talk about anything, there are no rules. And for you know most of my life, I was doing television, which is very censored and very controlled. Mm-hmm. And the older that I get, the more that I just wanna say what's on my mind. And the older that I get, the more I have to say. And the more, the less that I want people telling me how to say it, right? You know, I love that actually. Yeah, right. And you get something in a podcast that you never get, honestly, on TV or on a live stage. Even like it's just, it's so intimate. It's just going to be a regular conversation. It's very yeah. rare, I think, that the air changes a little bit, and I can feel that somebody's feeling like they're supposed to, you know, say something a certain way or whatever. And I'm glad about that. Yeah. I'll be driving, listening to podcasts, yes. and I genuinely feel like I'm eavesdropping, or sometimes I feel like I'm just popping in on the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I hear myself going, yeah, or I hear myself going, that's ridiculous. You know, I become like that person that's like, yeah, <laughs> just yelling stupid shit out loud at the car, like, they, like if they can hear me, but that's what a good conversation will do. You know, sometimes you're just listening and it's information, but mm-hmm. a really good conversation between two people really makes you feel like you're, you're listening 
to something you're not supposed to. Right. Or you're part of the conversation. Right. And right? you feel like you know the people. Yeah. I think also. Um, Which doesn't usually happen when you're watching TV or when, you know, even like the good morning shows when that are really casual and you like the people because they're great personalities yeah. and you've been watching them forever and they're fun. That's still not really how people are when they're, when they, whatever they want. Whether or not they say something they may regret later, you know, that's okay. Yes. Because I, I feel like we're we're probably at, at a point in our lives, I don't know about you, but you know, once you get past your 30s, you get to a point where, yeah, you might say something you'll regret, but so what? Right. You you said it. And, and uh, you know, <sighs> unless you say something really screwed up where you're hurting people, it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I actually think that that becomes a more valuable something or other. So for example, there are times when I will be editing one of my podcasts and I don't, I don't edit much. I really mostly, almost only take things out if it's too long. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to have a, you know, there have been conversations that went on for three hours. I'm sure. not going to lie. So like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's a little long. I don't know that everybody needs three hours of this. I love the three hours right. that I have, but I don't know that everybody else does. So usually it's just that. But sometimes I'll listen to something. I'll be like, oh, I have to take that out. I am so, re- I cannot believe I just said that. And then I'll be like, you know what? That is what, that's what makes it real. Yeah. Like I, and I ask that of my guests to so just be yourself and like yeah. say what you're really thinking or feeling. So yeah. I need to do the same thing myself. And I do think that people relate to those little things more because they're like, oh yes, you're a real person. Yeah. You know, and I felt like that too, or I would have said that I was cracking up or whatever it is. So yeah. Especially we're living in an age where everybody is so critical of everything i know and no matter acts of all kinds no matter what you say people are going to give you so much shit and people are going to criticize everything that you say you can't listen to those uh key war keyboard warriors those people who Uh are just you know sitting at home with their uh private accounts just criticizing everybody and doing nothing in life for like a hobby or something So I was interested in what you said about it. So it's very purposeful, or what was the word you used on TV? Like very micromanaged or something, or planned? Censored. What was it? Censored. Yeah. All right. So can you give me some details? Like what do you like? How? What are you thinking of? Um, of everything. I'm thinking of of network and even cable. Every television, every television program is really controlled by your advertisers, and and you might be too to some degree. Um, but perhaps you can, you know, uh, clap back and be like, okay, well, I'll get another advertiser or whatever. Because at the end of the day, it's it's what you, you know, it's, it's what you want to talk about. And you are going to talk about what you want to talk about. If one of your advertisers is bent out of shape about something that you believe in or want to talk about, then you might say, okay, fair enough, I'll get another advertiser. Um, on television, it's different. It's very different. It's controlled by um, standards and practices. It's controlled by advertising. It's controlled by really scared executive producers and network um, executives. And everybody everybody is, is scared for their jobs. And it's so many cooks in the kitchen. And so many people have a say in every single little thing, you know. That must be exhausting. It is. But there comes a point where you just know that that's what it is. And you mm-hmm. choose your battles. You know, that's not the place where you're going to really fight to uh, to say certain things. Okay. That's so not your like, platform to really to, to speak up on certain things. So give me an example. Even something as simple as veganism, you know. They don't want to hear it? Oh, well, they don't want to they don't want to turn off an advertiser who's exactly, selling something non-vegan. Exactly. Okay. And everybody's you think everybody's operating out of fear, huh? Everybody's up. You just have to kind of uh, follow the money. Follow the money because that will dictate what who controls the conversation. Mm. And you've been on so many different TV shows. Yeah. So many. Um, I do want to ask you about a new leaf, which is your yeah. new one. Yeah. You know, it's sponsored by Ancestry.com, yes. right? Yeah. And it's all about f- finding your ancestry yeah. and your family and tracing that, which is really interesting. And I feel like people are so into that these days, who they're related to and who did what and who came from where. And I can see why. I just sent in my own DNA. Just? Yes. Oh, and so you're waiting for the result. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see. What do you think? Do you think you know it? Yeah, I don't expect anything 
two different. I mean, I know I was born in Cuba mm -hmm. and I went to Spain when I was three. My mother's from Spain and all her family's from Spain. My father's from Cuba and his family's from Cuba. So I don't expect anything different than Cuban and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Except it does go far back. So yeah, there it does. could be even a small percentage sure. of something. Sure. I did mine a few years ago. I was so curious because I really feel Italian. Yeah. And like the family history is. My mom's side is Irish mostly, and my dad's side is like German, Austrian. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the family story. But I could swear, when I'm in Italy, I'm like, this, these are my people, I'm home. <laughs> I feel like it in my bones yes. that I'm home. So I was like, I have to find out. So I did take the Ancestry.com test, the DNA test. And? And it came back, there was maybe a, I think it was 2% Italian Greek. So like they kind of lump those go. two together. Yeah. I was like, all right, so somebody down the road or behind yeah. me was Italian. There you go. And then they revamped it. So they didn't oh. revamp it, but they came back maybe six months ago or a year ago and said, we have just, we have so many more samples now that we can pinpoint better what's what. Oh. So I ended up having zero Italian. Oh no. Zero. And that's the thing is that in, when you really go back, back, back in time, countries used to be something else. Right. That's what I'm finding out, that people who thought, you know, they were, oh yeah, we're 100% Greek. Well, in those times, now when they get their DNA, they, they're showing they're like 50% Italian because Italy was, you know, yeah. in what is now, you know, part of Greek is what used to be Italy or part of that used to be this and, you know. Yeah, so many changes. Yeah, a lot so of changes. So it's very fluid. So it's, yeah. But it is fun to see, I think, what what's what. It is, it's really interesting. It is interesting. So you're waiting to see what's gonna I'm come back, to see. but it's probably gonna be what you I, think it I is. Do, I, I know, I know it's gonna be mostly Cuban and Spanish, but you know, with that mix, mm -hmm. there, there, there are a lot of influences. Right. With the Spanish and, and with the Cuban. There could be Afro-Cuban involved in there, there could be, um, I don't know, with the Spanish side, there could really be, I, I, don't, I yeah. don't really even know, like there could be a little bit Moroccan or a little bit more of, who, who knows? You'll find out. Yeah. But the interesting thing too that I think people are finding out with the DNA coming back is like sisters and brothers or siblings or like kids oh, of people. I, don't need, I do not want to know that. I do not need to know that. But I think that's a big thing that it has come thing. out with the science. It's like it everybody in those previous generations mm -hmm. who tried to bury things under the rug, mm -hmm. suddenly they are being revealed by science. That is true. People contact other people like, oh, I was matched to your DNA. It's like everybody's secrets have that's been. That's right. I actually know someone who went through that as a what as what this part? woman who um did this dna and realized that she was half italian and had this whole family in italy had um a twin sister in italy a twin sister yeah that she didn't know about that she didn't know about well why was she adopted i don't, I don't remember exactly what oh, happened okay. um or maybe it wasn't a twin sister i think they were almost tw like she was like, like nine yeah. months apart like yeah like a few months apart <laughs> so there's a story there yeah yeah so interesting and, but the sister like looked identical to her but was from a different you know wow yeah i think like i heard a, a story somewhere too where somebody yeah. found out they had a big family and they were so welcoming to this person who didn't even yeah. know yeah and it turns out that the same thing happened with her this whole family was really welcoming and she really took to the sister and they were really uh, uh, happy uh, that they discovered this, everyone except obviously for the girl's mother. Sure. And, you know, uh, there were a couple of people that were very upset by it, but everybody else was really excited and were, everybody was like, oh my God, this was like, you know, almost 40 years ago, let's get past it. Yeah, that's you really, know? it's really does just blow things out of yeah. the water. Like you can't even predict what's gonna happen, but um, that is so interesting. And the show, I was watching one of the episodes of A New Leaf, like a couple of weeks ago, I think, and you go through the whole chart with the yeah. guest of the show of the day. And like you point to this, 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 you go through it, I'm always confused by the term second cousins. Can you like explain yeah. that to me once and for all? I feel like I don't even understand what is a second cousin. So I think the second cousin would be from, yeah, so yeah, and I, I don't wanna say it wrong because it is really complicated and mm -hmm. a little confusing. So I think, um, so a 
great great grandfather the son maybe is what is your uh great second cousin uh, like your second cousin maybe okay i don't know and then their son maybe is your second cousin your second second cousin i, I don't okay i don't some, know but i think it's always confusing so i think like your great grandfather's son maybe at that point becomes like your second cousin okay i think right right because i think that also think. on ancestry if i remember correctly right i don't have a family tree on ancestry but i know that it comes up as like how you're related to certain people like second or third cousins or third or fourth it just always confuses yeah. me but it just means you're a little so further away so the way away. it works is i get all this information for the families yeah. that i'm that i'm working with and i become I, I get really involved and interested because it's the person I'm, I'm I'm about to talk to yeah and it gets really complicated and it does go far, far back quite a bit and I get into it for that moment but then once I'm done and go to the next family I kind of forget that one yes. and I'm on to the next you one it's very really hard for me to to remember who's yes. what you know what I mean but you definitely have to because yeah. how can you keep you confuse everybody's families exactly you have to be in the moment very <laughs> present for each person you know and it's a lot it does get quite complicated um, so sure. I try to focus on the family that I'm with at the moment yes you know? I think that's the right approach yeah <laughs> right, so let's go back further so it all started when you were a TV presenter Right? Yes. Is that kind of when it all started? It for all you? started really when I was modeling. When you were, and that was in college. I yeah, I was going to college when my next door neighbor kind of gave me an opportunity to fill in for one of her models. She was a designer. Uh huh. She was an assistant designer for a big couture designer in New York. Her so where was this? Was this in New Jersey? In New Jersey, yeah. Her little sister played with my little sister, and she was short a model on a weekend and asked my mother if I could go into t into the city with her. She was really desperate. Two models called in sick, and so I went in, and and it worked out. She's like, she knew I would fit the clothes, and blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. I ended up becoming the fit model for, for the designer. Um, he got one of his uh, runway models from Ford Modeling Agency to teach me how to do runway. I was really young. I think maybe I was 18 when she taught me how to do runway so I could walk in one of his fashion shows, which was very exclusive. And that's where I met this really wonderful, very elegant woman who took a liking to me. We started speaking after the fashion show. And I said to her, oh, I, I noticed you have an accent. Are you Hispanic? And she said, yes, I'm from Ecuador. Uh, and then I started speaking to her in Spanish. She said, oh, you speak, Sp you speak very good Spanish for such a young woman who speaks perfect English. I said, oh, well, it's my first language. And uh, she said, well, have you ever thought of doing Spanish television? It's really difficult to find young women in this country who speak perfect Spanish and perfect English. My husband is the president of Univision. Oh, whoa. <laughs> so what? she kind of took me under her wing. She decided to become like my fairy godmother in television. She said, he's looking for a weather girl. And I thought, yes, because I know nothing about the weather. Let's do that. I've never done television. Just throw me in front of a <laughs> green screen. <laughs> Right. Talk Let about me science. Talk about science and the weather. <laughs> and you know, when you're eight, when you're like 18, 19, you have no fear. You're like, oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I can do that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So I just, you know, I, I kind of, she guided me. She taught me. She prepared me. And I just went for it. I thought, what, what do I have to lose? Right. She was so sweet. And it was kind of like, she believed in me. So I, I went for it. And I learned a lot. And that's where it all started. I hear that's all about like that one person who believed yeah. in you. Her name is Raquel Egas. I still remember her. She was lovely. So she started everything. And then what happened from there? You did the weather. I did the weather. I started doing that. And then um, I, I believe he left the station. I stayed on a little bit longer. And then I went to the other station, to Telemundo in New York. So, I mean, can you imagine? I'm, I was like 19 years old. had no idea what I was doing. And I started the number one market in the country for news doing the weather it was like it's so still of. weather though so you yes, are now so a weather guru the world, yes so now i went to do the weather at the competing station except on on this uh channel i had a chance to do i asked him to let me go out uh, into uh, the community and do some lighthearted stories of the community as well as the weather and i enjoyed that a little bit more i learned a lot about editing and about doing stories and kind of writing my own my own stories and putting together quick little segments so 
it was at the time that MTV was all the rage. It was it was on everywhere you went, and every kid my age, you know, fantasized about just living on MTV. So I remember talking to one of the editors saying, that's what I really want to do. I mean, I, I, I wish I could be on MTV. And my mom just kept saying, well, send them a tape, send them a tape. And I thought, mom, it doesn't work that way. You need an agent, you need a manager, which I didn't have. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so th- this sweet editor said, oh, you know what? I can maybe edit a tape together for it, put it together for you. And, and my wife knows someone who knows someone who knows someone at MTV. Maybe we'll just send it to that person. And I thought, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, that random person <laughs> who knows what their role is. So sure enough, that's what we did. He put together a little tape of all these little fun segments that I had done all in Spanish and doing the, the, the news and doing weather. And I wrote them a little note saying, hey, you guys, I love the channel. Music is my life. I promise I do speak English. I know this is in Spanish, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what I wrote. And I thought they threw the tape in the garbage. But about eight months later, I got a call from this wonderful woman, Barbara Corcoran, who was the executive producer of this brand new show that was about to launch, MTV Internacional in Spanish. And uh, Steve Leeds, who is now at Sirius XM Radio, uh, was the on-air talent director at the time. And he was handed this tape, he had the tape, and he said, he handed it to Barbara and said, you know, there's this girl speaking in Spanish. I, I don't know what she's saying, but I thought maybe you might want to take a look at it. And she said, you know, your Spanish was so good that I thought I'd call you to come in. And she had already looked at over a hundred girls and they all had a very detectable accent from somewhere and she was oh. looking for a very neutral Spanish because it was going out to so many Latin American countries. Oh, so they were all regional? Was that it? The yeah. others? Yeah, so she really so was yours looking was for a very like clean really, Spanish. Uh, and yours is clean probably because of Spain, right? Because, uh, well, when I came to this country I had a very strong Castilian Spanish, uh-huh. which I guess, uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, I can't compare it to a very strong like Queen's English mm-hmm. from the UK. So if someone comes to this country speaking a very proper English from England, that's what the Spanish would be like from there, as opposed to a softer Latin American Spanish. Right. Uh, but then I didn't speak English. And the kids from this country who spoke Spanish in New Jersey didn't understand my really strong Castilian. So I had to tone down that Spanish right away so that at least the kids who spoke Spanish could understand me. So I learned how to control my Spanish accent oh, when I was young. Good, <laughs> that what a good influence that you had to adapt like sure, that. Sure, I adapted it. And so I guess once I started doing television, I just kept it kind of neutral. Uh-huh. You know, especially when I was reading teleprompter, I just kept it very clean. and. It worked. <laughs> so it worked. So then yeah. you, boom, you yeah. were on MTV. Yeah. Got it. Loved it? Loved it. Did you feel like, so you never felt like, I mean, did you just, did you feel good? Like, yes, I belong here. Finally, it No, came. I always thought it was always going to last like another month. Okay. I thought it was like a fluke and it was, I was so lucky. And how did I end up here? I'm just going to enjoy it for as long as it lasts. Mm. Every time my contract was renewed, I thought that was going to be the last, I'm just going to enjoy it because this might be the last time I get to do this right I kind of still feel that way every time I get a gig so and and the truth is that you don't know you never know you know especially in the end in the entertainment industry being a woman Mm -hmm. and you know I'm in my 50s and the fact that I'm still even working is I I have to be grateful every single day (laughs) it's great though but it does say something about you too obviously that you're like a force I think to be reckoned with you know I don't know about that thank you I really don't know about that I'm just kind of going with it you're going with it and you're open to different things it sounds like you appreciate what you have you know I know women who are a force and I'm certainly not one of those women I wish I were I, I believe given the chance I could be um but I know those women and I, 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 I don't dare put myself in, okay. that, in that place. And are they in a place where, are they successful? Yes. So they are, and it's yes. because they're a force. Yes. yes, women, there are women who are a force, who are really, really um, doing things. Like who, do you wanna name some? Oh, sure. Um, you know, you've, you've got women like Jennifer Lopez who, you know, entering her 50s are, you know, going strong and really uh, changing what women in her in their 50s are supposed to be doing or supposed to be looking like. Uh, You've got uh, women who are 
you know, the women who started the Me Too movement, who are really changing uh, what what the world looks like for women of today and future generations. Um, you know, women like Greta Thunberg, who are changing the world for generations um, at such a young age. So those are women of force. Women, I, 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 I think of women in those categories. Mm-hmm. When you, when you, you say women of yeah, force, yeah, yeah. I think of women who are changing the mm-hmm. world. Now, in all fairness, you also have, you've done so much. So there are so many different facets of your career, you know, with all the business things, like the entrepreneurship. I don't know, if, would you call it entrepreneurship? Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Yes, with, you do. Yes. Okay, so with all of that on top of Maybe everything. an accidental entrepreneur, okay. <laughs> but yes. So you're almost an accidental a lot of things yes. then. Yes, Is that how you see it? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, there were all opportunities that came my way that I, I think I, I think I might have been really good at, at taking advantage of opportunities. Mm. Um, but I've never been one of these people who, who had the, this amazing ambition and went out and, you know, paved the way and kicked ass and moved people out of my way to make shit happen. And I'm not one of those people, but I, I will work hard. I will take an opportunity and I will do the best that I can. And the older that I get, the more that I want to do things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I was young, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I never had a vision for what I wanted to do. Things kind of came my way and life kind of had its plan for me and and the road kind of opened up for me and I kind of went the way yeah. that it panned out for me. You know, I, I took advantage of opportunities. I made decisions based on what came my way and maybe that helped my life, the decisions that I made. I don't know, the decisions that we all make kind of determine the life that we have yeah I think for sure because there there are other people there are other people I'm sure who would see an opportunity like that and for whatever reason just pass on it or sure. not not even pass on it but just not take it make it happen even yeah. once it was presented or not do anything good with it so that is something but yeah. that is interesting you didn't really have to have a dream because it was already just yeah. kept coming to you in a way that you never even really expected I guess yes. and I remember you know, when I was young, a lot of people really knew what they wanted to do with their lives. They they had a plan from the time that they were really, really young. Mm-hmm. They wanted to either follow in the steps of their parents or they had a dream that they wanted to be an actor or they wanted to be a singer. They had a talent that told them, you know, clearly in the direction that they should go. Yeah. And I never had any of that. I never knew anyone who was in the entertainment industry. You know, my parents uh, came to this country when they were very young they worked in factories my mom while she was working at a factory you know eight to ten hours a day took a government school program where she learned to speak English and learned computer skills and so you know while we were in in daycare so they they I didn't that's what I saw I just saw people working hard and trying to better themselves I didn't really have an example of of people you know oh I'm gonna follow my dream and become like an entrepreneur and become Mm -hmm. you know a a newscaster or an actress or so I I was kind of lost a little bit in that in that way so what about when people started recognizing you from TV I imagine MTV was a big part of that right yeah because it was like fame at, at a certain point came right yeah, MTV kind of, when MTV started airing, it was not only in this country, but it was international. Mm-hmm. So that was... Um, so that how was, did you see that? Like, did, when did you start to notice it, that people were... It was pretty fast, and it was pretty interesting. It was pretty cool. It, it, I remember it was uh, thinking it was pretty cool, because it was different than today. People would notice you in the street, and they were pretty kind. It was, you know, all the younger people especially would know my name and they would want a picture. They would want an autograph. Right, an autograph because they weren't walking around with cameras. Right. Everybody wasn't. Yeah, and I didn't get to hear all the nasty things that they would, I didn't get to read all the nasty things that they would write like on social media, right. which they would today. Yeah, they <laughs> would. Know? They would destroy you today they because they would destroy, they like do. we were saying before, yeah, Mother Teresa. Absolutely. Right, they do, <laughs> right, right, right. That's awful. <laughs> so so it was pretty right. nice. It was pretty nice. Yeah. Um, 
so it was nice fame. It was well. It was yeah. well intended. Especially because I got to see how proud my parents were of me. Yeah, I mean, and your mom was the one who was telling yeah. you to just send the tape. My mom was always very supportive. So, so she was they were very really, proud. Yeah, they were excited to see. Yeah. They you. never knew anybody famous. So when I started getting recognized, they were very proud. Because sure. all of a sudden they had someone famous in the family. Right, not only just in the family, but they're yeah. on Todd or Daisy. That was really sweet. So what is the deal with social media today? So you know about <laughs> stuff. Is it like? Do you do you watch it? Do you see it? Or you oh, try absolutely. to tune it out? Or oh, what? absolutely. You know, I believe that social media at the end of the day, it's about being social, isn't it? So what's the point of me having social media if I'm not going to interact with the people on it? So I like I do like to interact, and I have to say the majority of the people are very nice, um, and I do have some really nice interactions with people, and I have gotten connected with some amazing organizations, and that's a good part of social media is that I I've gotten uh, linked with like-minded people, um, great organizations who I now work with. But it also brings out all the trolls. Yeah. And, you know, and I do ignore them for the most part, and I try to focus on the positive. But every now and then, I feel like you have to, to answer because it's not okay. It's not okay. You know, and we're all grown-ups. And in society, bullying is not okay. So sometimes you have to put people in their place. You don't, it's like, you don't go to someone's house and just call them names and talk shit about them and get personal with them and then just run away. Mm -hmm. You don't get to do that. So every now and then, you know, especially when, and it's usually women. It's usually really? women. Oh, so there is some jealousy. And it's not okay. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out sometimes. So they'll say, they'll call you names or say things about yeah. you, just like what, comments on Twitter or something yes. like that? Is it mostly Twitter? Or on Instagram. On Instagram too? I Absolutely. always think of Instagram as the more friendly. Absolutely. So I'll put a photograph. For example, I'll put a, a photograph of me just smiling. And they'll leave comments on my appearance. They'll either say that I look too old or that I've done surgery. What have I done that I look like this, that I look like that, that I should stop doing this, that I should stop doing that. And, and I'm like, that yeah, is not no okay. Good. No. That is not okay. That so what okay. will you do at that point? You know, so at that point, I just say what I would say to anybody. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm honest. It's like, you know, like what went so wrong in your life that you feel it's okay to comment on another woman's appearance who you've never met? Even if I did look however the hell I wanted to look, it is none of your business than that. It's not okay. Well, no, like, it's not even okay to do that with somebody you know you're not going to exactly. do it. Exactly. You're not going to do it with somebody exactly. you know, somebody you don't know. I don't know why. That doesn't even... Yeah, like what kind of mental issues do you have? Like seek some help. Yeah, it is kind of um, disturbing when yeah. you think about how many numbers of uh -huh. people yeah. do things like uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Like, what do you... Ta why? Yeah. Why? Why? I mean, I, I do always think it's less Instagram than I see on Twitter, but I guess I see you're saying everywhere. in the comments. If, like you're gonna my, if you get that many comments, there are gonna yeah. be some people who pop in. Like my husband will post a picture of, of us together and somebody will post, will say something like, well, how, how could you post such a derogatory or something so nasty about your wife just showing her tits or like, how could you be like, like that? It's like, it's your wife. Like if I'm showing, if it's a picture where I like there's a cleavage or something or he says, oh, she, my wife, she's hot. Like, why would you talk about your wife? Like, it's like, gee, like what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with you people? I know I can't answer that. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know what, what the answer is. is. You know, and for the most part, you ignore it for the most because you can yeah. tell when people are just so bitter and when you can tell when people are just mentally deranged right. when there's a serious problem, you know, you just block it or erase the comment and move on because I don't, at the end of the day, I don't want such ne negative energy yes. rolling around in there. Yes. But sometimes, you know, you have to address it. Yeah. And then but there are all the positive people too who want to go out totally. of their way to say something and nice. And most of the time, those are the people who I do interact with. Right, and those are the right. So you'll go back after, and if somebody comments, you'll comment. I out usually do. Usually, the, those are my interactions. Just every now and then, I have to put someone yeah. in their place. Yeah, it's crazy though. <laughs> Social media. I know I shouldn't, crazy. but you know what? So what? Right. So what? I think you need to do what you need to do. Absolutely. Like we were saying before, like you have Absolutely. to do <laughs> enough of this censoring and enough of the controlling. Like you're going to do what like you what feel is right. Someone go to someone else's account. Yeah, but that's that says a lot because 
You would if you. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's the whole point. You're going to somebody's account. Yeah. Yeah. To say something right. negative. It's almost like if you walk into a yoga studio, like in the next town over from you, walk inside and start yelling at the yoga instructor saying, I don't want to take a yoga class. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> right. How dare you say that? That's, the same. That's a good analogy. It's ridiculous, but it is the same thing. Like, what is wrong with you? Right. Yeah, if really, I mean, there are so many positive things, but there really are so many, like, it's really crazy. So you get recognized, too. I'm thinking, because I was picturing you for a second going into a yoga class. And is it weird to walk around with people knowing who you are? So I, you know, I, I don't know if people know as, as oh, okay. much. I, I think it depends on what I look like, you know? And maybe out of context. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, some, and then sometimes I feel like, Oh, like I'm completely incognito and then somebody will walk up to me and be uh, like it's okay I won't say anything but I, it's like I'm a fan of yours and I follow you on Instagram it's like oh so you really know everything about me <laughs> like you should have said something I'm sitting here thinking nobody like I'm completely incognito but the whole time you've been sitting like on a flight for example somebody will be sitting across from us and then on the way out of the flight somebody will say to Richard and me uh, like, oh I don't want to say anything, but I follow you guys on Instagram and I love your dogs and I love when you do this and when you say, it's like, oh, okay. We've been sitting there the whole time uh, thinking nobody's looking. They've been staring at us the whole time or something. So well, you know? would you prefer if they said it to you sure, at the beginning? just say hi. You would, really? Yeah. You would rather they say it at the beginning and say, hi, well, I'm a fan, I'm following you, I follow you both. Because it's true, they're, like, they're following you on Instagram. They do see a lot about both of you. Sure. So it's like, they do you know, know more you've than- you've been creeping for five hours from yes. across the place. And you're like, oh, great. If I knew somebody was watching me the whole time, I wouldn't have, whatever. Um, so Richard, so you're married to Richard Marks. I am. The singer, the musician. Um, how did this happen? You, how did you meet? Have you told the story a million times? I um, hope not. We, we kind of met through a friend, but through a friend on social media. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so he was, um, he was talking to a friend on social media that were having this conversation, Martha Quinn. Oh, Martha Quinn from yeah. MTV. who we both follow love her and I jumped in that we're having a conversation about the, like this total 90s thing and what platform is this now on Twitter okay and um, and then we kind of became aware of each other and then we started following each other so now we're following each other for a while and then um, he invited me many months later right I want to say maybe almost like a year later he was having a show in LA he invited me to a show I ended up going to the show um, we didn't even realize we had the same publicist at the time. And a few months after that, he invited me to dinner when he came back into town. Like, I literally only saw him for a minute, said hello at that show. Um, but then he slipped into my DMs. Uh huh. Uh huh. Isn't and that always how it happens? Me. That's how it happens. That's how the kids do it these days. Yeah. So I hear. And, uh, <laughs> and I ended up um, talking a little bit more at this dinner. And then after that, we kind of stayed in each other's lives. Uh-huh, and that was that. That was that, I didn't realize at that time he was separated, I thought he was married and we were just friends, but. Oh, so you weren't looking at it that way at I all. I wasn't at all, because he's very private, and as far as I knew, he was married and living in Chicago, but I wasn't aware that at the time he was moving to LA and in the middle of a separation. Oh. But he's so private, he's not public at all, so I didn't know that until I obviously started talking to him mm -hmm. oh you had an actual real conversation yeah like personal conversation yeah okay so he was moving out here at the time so that was yeah. the timing was right right it was right. a probably a moment of turmoil for him yes he was going through a lot so we did take it really slow because it's it, it's it was yeah as you could imagine for anybody going through a divorce but especially after such a long time mm -hmm. being married and how long was he married um i think he was married 27 or 29 years oh that is a long time yeah. was it weird knowing that he's richard marks um not really because for so many years you've known so many famous people right yeah, so plus you're also used to that he's also I, I you know he'd been so out of my radar for so many years like i know we must have been in the same room at the same time at the same events 
you know, during the heyday. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've introduced his videos in Spanish and in English back in the day. So I know, I know him as Richard Marx from, you know, the hit maker back in the day. Yeah. But I, I also haven't heard anything about him for so many years that it was just like, you know, meeting somebody uh -huh. brand new. Okay. That is so funny though. If you had known then that you were wow. announcing your future husband, isn't that so weird? Like it's, it's so weird. If only you could have been hovering over yourself in some way and said, "It's so Note weird." This. I, I really think that the universe kind of sends you little messages. You know, if you look back at your life, if you get a chance to look back at your life 20, 25 years. And look at the little details. Yeah. I'll bet you there are hidden messages in there <laughs> of what was coming into your life 20, 25 years later. I see what you're saying yeah. with that. I do. I was going through, this is a couple of years, maybe about a year ago. For some reason, I was going through this old box of things that was in our basement. And I don't know, I must have been looking for something specific. And I pulled out this folder from a college class. And the college class was career and lifespan planning. It was my first semester in college and it was like the only class I could get into at the last minute or something. And I, they had us mapping out like what we would think our career should look like, like what our interests were and whatnot. So I remember we did some testing and that sort of thing. And then I'm looking at one of the, the papers that I wrote about how you, what do you see for yourself? And it said like, what do you dream of doing and can you see making it happen? And it was being a talk show host. So weird, for the last 20 years, I had never even thought that. So to look back at that, when I saw that, I said, what the, That's... who even knew that when I was 18, I was writing this down, forgot about it, went off in a completely different yeah. direction, and now I host a show. Yeah. Right? It was the weirdest the moment. The law of attraction. It happens and it works whether you believe in it or not. You attract what you put out there. Yes, I agree with that. But that, how is that that? Because if I wasn't doing it for so long, I wasn't putting that you out there. You put it out there. You're saying I put you it out there even it though down. I was unaware. I put it out, I wrote, wrote it down it at 18. Down. It was a sort of vision board that you didn't even realize. And then I didn't look at the vision board and no, it came it to life. There, and it came around full circle when you were ready for it. So weird. Yeah. So what do you feel like with you would be an example like that? With I the, have so many examples like of what? it. Um, when I was young, I used to look through magazines. Remember I told you I didn't really have any real ambition or I yeah. didn't see myself doing anything. I used to look through magazines and I would imagine that the girls in the magazines were having such a great time doing what they were doing, that the models would get to travel to these wonderful locations and have these wonderful clothes and they had these great like hair and makeup people and I would live vicariously through them and I would never be jealous for them, I would always kind of envision what life would be like for them and never really putting myself in their place, like, oh, I want to do that, but I would, it, I would almost transport to what it was like for them in that page, like to get that picture. Mm. And then I remember when it happened to me, when I was actually modeling and doing that. And I didn't realize it when it started happening to me. It wasn't until I started learning about uh, the law of attraction and just visualization and how you, what you think actually happens, how your life is really uh, uh, an indication of what your thoughts are. That's interesting because that happened when you were younger too and then mm -hmm. that did happen too. So you're saying it was like you were an accident, because before mm -hmm. you were saying I was an accidental entrepreneur and almost an accidental anything or yeah. everything, but now it looks like you weren't. Yeah. You're I remember, manifesting it. Yes, and I remember another another example is uh, you know we I come from a very from very humble modest upbringing. Nobody in my family is you know a multimillionaire. My parents um, worked very hard. We weren't poor, but you know they worked very hard. We never had you know anything fancy. They always made ends meet, but barely. Uh huh. Um, and I remember just never thinking, oh, we have trouble making ends meet. Oh, money is a problem for us. That was never a thought, never. And I do remember anytime we would see 
either a beautiful car or a beautiful house or anything that was a little bit more upscale, a little bit more elevated, I remember just thinking, oh, I love that. Or, oh, yeah, I want to live like that. Oh, that's the house I want. Oh, I can't wait to have that car. Never thinking, oh, I can't have that. That's not for us. We can't have that. And sure enough, that's kind of the, ha- the life that I manifested. I didn't know how I was going to manifest that life. But I manifested a life where I could pretty much have the things that I wanted. Yes. I didn't know how. I didn't know how. I was reading this book. It's fabulous. And I feel like you're saying the same thing in this book. It's called How to Be a Badass. No, something about bad. Something about badass. Like be your, your ba- be the badass the that you yes, are. So, I, yes, yes, You know yes, what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I know the one you're talking about. Yes. So good. I remember I got it by accident because yeah. I don't really read self-help books. Yeah. I, mean, really, I really don't ever read self-help books right. at this point in my life. But I, this ended up on my phone for some reason in this app. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? How did this get here? And I don't know if maybe I had seen something and said, oh, I should check out this book. And like I had requested it or mm-hmm. something and it came in later. I don't know what happened, but it landed in my phone. And for some reason, I started reading it. Uh-huh. And I was like, this book is, yes, I get it speaks to me. And it's all the things that you're saying yeah. right now. All those things. Yeah. And I do really, I get it. I see that. And yeah. you can see you're proof positive of that. Absolutely. And it's, it, you know, you can see it in the negative and you can see it in the positive. Anytime you think something negatively, it happens. And it can be as simple as like, oh, every time I have to go to this place, it's the worst mm. traffic. You better bet your ass you're going to be sitting in some traffic. So it's that's like, your state of mind and that's what you're calling to yourself and that's where you're putting yourself. And also, maybe it's gonna feel like worse traffic. To uh, you're, you you're, you're, because gonna you're happen. gonna see it's it. It's like gonna that. happen. It's gonna happen. So interesting. Like I, ever since I was young, I always get the best parking spots everywhere. Anywhere I go, I get the parking spot in the front. Really? It happens. That's because happens. you think it's gonna happen. Exactly. Exactly. What's the, what? Uh, what other explanation is there? <laughs> right. Right. So <laughs> my husband will drive around for hours get frustrated, get annoyed, and I will be driving and I'll get a spot right in the front. So do you think he yes. assumes he's not gonna get a spot? Yes. <laughs> I feel like with me it's 50-50. <laughs> you know, like getting, going through New York City and like trying to find a spot, it is 50-50. Some days you're like, whoa, this score, yes. what a spot, I can't believe it. But that's kind of the, the, the explanation of uh, the, the law of attraction in its simplest form is that you will attract yes. what you put out there. And recently I was listening to um, a woman who was talking about the law of attraction and she fully believes in it and she talks about it and she explains it. And you know, she talks about like, oh, so the people who went through a horrible upbringing and went through horrible abuse and really, really terrible things, what you're saying is that they manifested those things into their life and she said, yes. They didn't willingly do it because she went through a horrible, horrible abuse in her life when she was young. And she said that now looking back, yes, the way that she thought kind of manifested that. And then the way she was thinking while it was happening kept her there longer than she had to. So she grew up in a household where her mother was always really afraid of everything. And she would always... um, she she put this fear of everything like be careful because it's a horrible world out there because there are horrible people that will do horrible things to you everywhere you go people are looking to do horrible and she grew up thinking that that horrible things were going to happen to her all the time that's all she knew that's how she was thinking all the time because that's how her mother thought and sure enough that's what happened to her and that's not what she wanted to happen to her of course not but that's what her subconscious was trained to believe So in a way, she explained it in a way where it kind of makes sense. It might not have happened in the first place because of what she did. Of course not. But what continued after that was maybe a factor of what she was kind of taught to do or think or believe about the world. You know, every time you go outside, you believe that something horrible is going to happen to you. You're attracting that to yourself. If you're envisioning something horrible happening to you, you're eventually going to draw that to yourself. So if you're constantly thinking of what you do not want to happen to you, that's what you're attracting to yourself. 
you know, and if you can think of it as like placing an order, like the, you know, the vibrations of the universe, they don't really think in terms of positive and negative. They only match what you're, the vibration of what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So it makes total sense. So when did you figure this out yourself? Um, when I started reading a lot about it and I started realizing that that's what had happened in my life, the good things and the bad things. Fortunately, in my life, there were more examples of good things. I realized that for the most part, I thought good thoughts most of my life. I thought positive things most of my life. I envisioned my daydreaming was always of positive things, of beautiful things. I always envisioned myself in, in good situations and better situations and almost impossibly good situations. And those things kind of happened. Yeah. Almost exactly as I visualized them, as I daydreamed them. What were some of the bad things? Um, that happened as I got older. As I got older that I was in some relationships that I would think, oh, this isn't gonna work out. Oh, something horrible is gonna happen with this relationship or mm, he's gonna do something not good. That's what would happen. So why did you think that? For because I think as we get older, fear gets into our minds. We are conditioned to think certain things. Society, um, just, we, we are kind of conditioned to think, uh, to be more humble. Mm -hmm. Society teaches us to be a little bit more humble. And the old, um, the, the old saying, uh, oh, don't, you know, don't jinx it. If you think it's, don't, don't jinx it, because then it might, if you think that's something good, it might turn out bad, or don't, it's all that bullshit that, that gets is, in the way. You are right, I that, think. Of us thinking how we used to think when we were kids. Yes. When, you, when, uh, when a natural, clean, innocent child thinks and they just imagine playing and they envision themselves being an astronaut and going to the moon and, you know, they envision themselves doing amazing things, you know. Not like the little girl whose mother was really fearful and would tell her that every time she would go outside something bad might happen and a bad man is gonna get her and do bad things to her. That's not a normal childhood. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, or the mother who's always thinking that something, that her son is gonna get hit by a car, that her son is gonna get some horrible illness, or that's not normal. And yes, I believe that everyone has moments of those scary thoughts. We all think, oh my God, what if? But you don't live in that thought. Yeah, you, you don't feel stay it and there. Go. You mm -hmm. get yourself out of that. And yeah. for the most part, you envision your children growing up to have wonderful lives. You envision them being fulfilled and having successful careers and being happy. You know, we all worry about the people that we love, but for the most part, you envision them being, you know, really wonderful. Yeah. So you think that when you started to think this is going to not yeah, last, happens. not be good, it happens. And it's because of just those messages that you can help but yeah. like shield yourself from fully, they came in and yeah. made it happen. Yeah. Mm, that's interesting. So what's, go ahead. No, I was just, I was just agreeing with you. So how do you feel about your marriage with Richard? How are you approaching it? So when that happened, I was in a place in my life where I was fully prepared to be single. I, I thought I was just gonna date. I was open to dating, but I, I was older and I was like, I, you know, I'm gonna be in a relationship until it's not good anymore and then I'm gonna not be in a relationship. I'm not, I don't need to be married. Right, so you were divorced at that point? Well, I was married when I was very young okay. for four and a half years. Um, and then I, I was in a couple of long relationships. You know, so I dated a little bit in between those. But I was in a couple of long relationships and dated and now I was older, I was in my mid 40s and I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna date, it's mm -hmm. fine. I, I, I'm fine, I'm so good by myself and I have, my family, I have great friends, and I'm good. And I remember thinking, you know, the kind of love that I want probably doesn't exist. Okay. But unless I find the kind of love that I want, which is like in fairy tales, that's what I want. I want that, that kind of love. That's what I'm gonna, that, I'm not gonna settle for anything less than that. And I remember thinking that that's what I want. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's what finally came into my life. So that's, that's what the came law of attraction. I, I wasn't, yeah, I, I wasn't looking for it. You know, and I remember somebody telling me a story of these older people and how it was almost like a fairy tale and they were old and this man loved this woman so much and he did so many beautiful, amazing things for her and it was just this amazing love story. And I remember saying, oh, I want that kind of love. That's what I want. Was That's that, wait, this is a movie you're saying? Lisa? No, somebody was telling me oh, about okay. a story, somebody, something that they read uh -huh. about, and it was like one of these uh, like amazing stories. And I remember saying, That's what I want. That's and anytime it. I would hear about something that I would say, That's what I want. That's what I need. I'm not settling for anything less than that. Right, because and before sure that, <laughs> yeah, yes. before that, you were attracting whatever. Yes. Some just difficult crap. Yeah. Because yeah. you didn't, that was what you were. Yeah, I just thought, you know, it had to be difficult. So now you've been together with Richard for like, what, four or five years? Five years. Five years. So do you feel like it's still, you're still giving off yes. it's still that same thing? Yeah. It's amazing. It's, I feel like we found our, we found each other at the right time. Isn't that so interesting? I really is. Yeah. All this, this whole conversation about what you're talking about with the law of attraction, all that, I think it's so interesting. It really is interesting. Yeah. And how, because you can go your whole life and not really think that way and not realize it, but it's like once you start seeing it, it really can yeah. change. Because the truth is that it's happening whether you believe it, mm -hmm. in it or not. You know, it's like I don't have to try to prove it to someone. I don't have to try to convince you that it's working because it's working whether you believe it or not. <laughs> you know, your life is proof of your thoughts. Yeah, and so right now your life is good. You feel like you have manifested what you yes. wanted for yourself yes. on so many levels. On so many levels. And even the things that I, that I have struggled with, I can see like, where it's coming from. You, uh, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like, especially as I've gotten older, as I've gotten older, the things that I find myself being negative about, I, I catch myself saying, mm, this is the perfect example of me saying things that are going to manifest in negative things. Okay. I'm saying things that, Mm, I, I catch myself. You, I was just gonna say, you catch yourself. I catch as myself. You're doing it. This is what I talk about. You know. Yes. So your life is good. You hang out with you have good friends. You and Richard see each other yeah. a lot. You go on tour with him sometimes, yeah. right? You were on tour with him recently. He yeah. was in I South travel America. With him a lot. Yeah. So that's fun. It is. And it's what's tiring your, sometimes, but it's fun. What's your daily life like? What's your day-to-day -day there thing? Is, there's really no routine, Different. which is good. Um, I enjoy really being at home these days a lot. Um, I'm at a point where I, I'm looking for challenges in my life. I don't know what that is. I feel a little bit um, transient. I don't really know how to explain that. You know, and I guess, and maybe this is an example of how I've been a little bit negative, you know, being in my 50s in in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. um and the opportunities especially for someone like me are very very limited at this point and i'm okay with that because i mean look i'm still working i'm doing things i i have my brand i'm busy so i'm okay but i'm still at a point where i want to be challenged by something and I don't really know what that is. So like a new something. Yeah, and I don't know if it's in the entertainment industry. I don't know if it's doing what I do or and I, it might be something new. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I catch myself sometimes limiting myself and, and that's where I have to pull myself out of it right. and, and realize that I can make some of my own opportunities. I just have to realize how it is that I want to contribute, what it is that I want to do. And sometimes I have to remind myself that it's okay if I don't want to do anything. You know, yes. it's okay if I do want to be semi-retired at this point and enjoy my life and enjoy my husband and enjoy my family. It's okay. We have to remind ourselves of that too. Yeah, it's interesting too. It's almost like when you were just figuring out what you wanted in a relationship. You just sometimes yeah. need time to figure that out. That's right. And then suddenly yeah. it may come to you as this is what I want to do next. That's right. It, like not all of us are meant to save the world. Mm -hmm. Not all of us are meant to, uh, you know, win a Nobel Prize. Some of us just have to live our best life, and and be the heroes in our own life, you know, and be a great 
wife and a really great daughter and a wonderful sister and a good friend and sometimes that's really wonderful and living in a time where social media makes us all feel like we need to be you know something grand and win an oscar and win a grammy and win a nobel prize and you know do something to to uh prove or or validate or something something. validate ourselves you know where in in an era where everybody gets a freaking trophy Uh it's kind of okay to not get one and to just do you and live a good life and be happy for your life like you know it's so easy to compare ourselves to that's a trap. everything but an it's, easy it trap is to trap. fall into a very common trap for people to fall into it's natural because we are social people exactly too. and that's i think probably part of it. Yeah. there is maybe some instinctive thing built in yeah. there or something but it is a trap yes and so i'm at a point where i feel so good sometimes with my life and <laughs> i'm at a point where i almost it's almost like i wherever there is something going on what everybody is doing like i almost don't want to do that (laughs) you know what i mean yeah (laughs) and that says something too you just have to figure out why do i want why do i want that it's probably right there's a good reason for that yes yes it's not a bad thing i'm starting to realize that it's okay to go to the beat of my own drum it's okay to want to be in my home Uh with my people i don't need to always be I, I so don't have FOMO. You know? That's good. You don't yeah. want FOMO. And you're evolving. Yes. We, all, know, need to, we all need to we evolve. We all need to evolve. And you've always kind of gone your own way anyway, even though maybe then yeah. it was a different kind of busier thing. And now you're, you're going to the, the more settled kind of thing. Yeah. It's still you're, you're going your own way. Yeah. So I say hooray for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, Daisy, this was great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Should I ask you my last question though? I feel like I should. I feel like you already answered it, but I do like to ask this a lot of times. So it's two parts. Who do people think you are? What's the image Mm -hmm. they have of Daisy Fuentes? Oh, I don't know. I think it depends who you ask. Um, I think some people will say, um, Daisy who? Um, Some people will say, um, some negative bullshit. Some people will say, uh, she's a has-been. Some people will say uh, she's doing wonderful things for animals. Um, and some people will say she encouraged me to eat healthier and make some changes. Um, and I like that bit. I'll go with that. I think it depends who you ask. And who are you really? Uh, I am, um, who am I really? I'm just, uh, I'm just a woman, really, trying to still figure out who I am and how I can still contribute and how I can still enjoy myself. I'm still trying to figure out um, what life is about, and I'm still trying to figure out how to enjoy myself. I think you're going to find it. (laughs) That's my prediction. (laughs) Thanks, Daisy. Thank you. That was Daisy Fuentes. Catch our video where Daisy answers extra questions. It's on youtube.com slash really famous. Make sure you tap the red subscribe button. And what I just realized is I've been telling you for like months now to tap that subscribe button, but I forgot to tell you to tap the little bell because that's actually the notification button. So you're notified every time I release a new video, which is basically every week. Thanks again to Robin Samuels and Christy Lance and to my spectacular patrons who donate a few dollars every month and are much appreciated by me. Thank you, Bob, Pat, Jamie, and my other wonderful patrons. If you'd like to donate a few dollars to Really Famous, amazing, you can go to reallyfamouspodcast.com slash donate. I also want to thank every one of you who has reached out recently to tell me how much you appreciate the show. And maybe there's one guest whose talk really impacted you and made you think or made you feel something. And I love that. I really appreciate you reaching out. It's a gift for me. So thank you for doing that. If you have something you want to say and you haven't reached out yet, please do. My email is reallyfamouspodcast at gmail.com 
or you can reach out through social media. I tend to favor Instagram. I'm a little easier to reach there, but I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson. Thank you for hanging out with me and Daisy Fuentes for an hour. I'll talk to you again soon. Very soon.